the Canadian Firearms Registry was a bit of bureaucracy that was really never popular, much maligned from its inception in 1993 until it was finally done away with in 2012 by Prime Minister Harper. It was expensive, it did nothing to protect public safety, and it made the lives of firearms owners more difficult. Now, there's been some rumblings on the internet that it's back. Is it back? We'll take a look at that today on Don't Talk TV. Hello, my name is Nicholas Wansputter. I'm a lawyer in Stratford, Ontario, Canada, and welcome to Don't Talk TV. So as I mentioned in the preamble, years ago, from 1993 to 2012, there was this thing called the Canadian Firearms Registry. It required all owners of firearms, that, and especially non-restricted firearms, to register the ownership of their firearm with the government. So the police and the federal government, they knew exactly who had what in terms of firearms, and at least in terms of legal firearms ownership. As I mentioned in the preamble, this did nothing to protect public safety. Criminals don't register their firearms, and people who smuggle firearms into the country don't register them either. And the thing was, as usual, a bloated monstrosity of bureaucracy that went way over cost. It cost a fortune for really no tangible benefit. So it was done away with by Stephen Harper. Interestingly enough, the firearms registry was so unpopular that even Justin Trudeau back in those halcyon days of 2012, when he was just a candidate for the leadership of the Liberal Party of Canada, he called the long gun registry a failure. So they have him uh, quoted here, Liberal leadership candidate Justin Trudeau called the long gun registry a failure during an Ontario campaign stop in the conservative riding of Glengarry Prescott Russell on Friday. Quote, the long gun registry as it was was a failure, and I'm not going to resuscitate that, Trudeau said while visiting the DART aerospace plant in Hawkesbury. Well, one may be forgiven for being skeptical just right off the hop of who's delivering that. We can think of a number of things that Justin Trudeau has said and haven't, haven't held true. I mean, first and foremost, I always think back to him saying how Canada is a country of inclusion and respect and one that, above all, values the right to one auto bodily autonomy. Well, we know that's absolutely not the case anymore, at least in the last year. So let's see what he's doing with the firearms registry. So the first interesting bit is this order in council that was passed just on the April the 29th. So it's pretty straightforward. It says, Her Excellency the Governor and Council, on the recommendation of the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness, pursuant to Sections 24 sub 4 and sub 5 of an Act to Amend Certain Acts and Regulations in Relation to Firearms, etc., fixes May 18th, 2022 as the day on which Sections 5, 7, and 9 to 11, subsections 13, 1, and 3, and Section 14 of the Act come into force. So, let's have a look at that Act to see what they're talking about. So, this Act to amend certain Acts and regulations in relation to firearms, that's a 2019 Bill C-71, received royal assent on June the 21st of 2019, so before COVID, before this channel even existed, which is why I never talked about it before. Specifically, I want to look at Section 5 of this Act, which amends Sections 23 and 23.1 of the Firearms Act. So, what it does here, and this is what's going to be coming in force on May the 18th. A person may transfer one or more non-restricted firearms if, at the time of the transfer, A, the transferee holds the license authorizing the transferee to acquire. So, as long as the person you're selling it to or transferring a firearm to has a PAL, okay, that's not different. The law says that right now, but two... Sub B, the registrar has, at the transfer's request, issued a reference number for the transfer and provided it to the transfer. So if you're selling or giving a firearm to someone, you need to get a reference number from the registrar. What do you have to do to get that reference number? Under subsection 2 here, the transferee shall provide to the transferor the prescribed information that relates to the transferee's license for the purpose of enabling the transfer to request the registrar issue a reference number for the transfer. So that's a bit of word salad, but basically what's happening is if you sell or transfer or gift a firearm to someone, now you have to get all kinds of information for them. And the prescribed information is going to be everything, name, date of birth, address, etc. 
this is a big problem from a privacy perspective. You're, I mean, granted, some might argue, well, if you have a pal, the registrar already has that information. But since they're getting the person doing the selling to do the bureaucratic work for them, the seller now has all this information, which I'd hope with uh, firearm stores might not be a big problem, but it could get a bit dicey if you don't know the person well that you're buying a firearm from, they now have all kinds of information on you that human nature being human nature. I mean, it's just, I'm sure the vast majority would be fine if it's legit firearms owners, but there could be some people with ill intentions that could get a whole bunch of information off of you and then use it to transfer firearms into your name without you knowing or doing things like that. So it's problematic from that regard. But it, it really comes down to being a backdoor way of bringing back in a firearms registry. Now the registrar and therefore the federal government, the RCMP, they know every single firearm that changes hands from May the 18th onwards. Now, if you already own a firearm, that's not registered. They're not going to have that. But this is a way of building up a registry over time as new firearms are sold, firearms are transferred. And really, registration is confiscation, or it's a step towards confiscation. And we've already seen what they did with restricted firearms, especially AR-15 and a whole host of other firearms. This is really paving the way to one day being able to make it all legal, and then they know who has it, so they can kick in doors, cut open safes, and take firearms. So this is certainly something of concern to firearms owners. The usual caveats apply, what can you do about it? Well, one thing you can do is if you want a firearm, you might want to consider purchasing it before the 18th. Make sure you're good to go before the 18th so you're not going into these registries. But it's also important to get involved in politics. Make sure people know what's going on there. I'm sure there's a lot of firearms owners that didn't even vote in the last election. They need to vote every election because these things are going on all the time. And we're going to see more of it. As I predicted on episode 50, we're saying things that I think are coming. This government is clearly very strongly committed to entirely disarming the Canadian populace. So things like this and other proposed acts going forward are things to keep your eye on. This video isn't legal advice. If you need legal advice, call a lawyer. You can call another lawyer or myself. My phone number and website are listed below. If there's show topics you'd like to see me cover, please uh, leave a comment in the comment section or send an email to the email address listed below. And if you found this video at all interesting, helpful, or informative, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, and following us on social media.